Welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. 3 Minute Thursdays are a short breakdown of topics that you will see within your flight training here at UND. The goal is for you, the student, to have a better understanding of what it takes to become a safe, professional pilot. Hello, my name is Tyler Lauer. I'm a lead flight instructor at UND Aerospace. The normal approach to landing is a complex maneuver to master. Each lap around the pattern poses different challenges. In this series of videos, I'm going to attempt to help you better understand how to execute the perfect landing by breaking down each approach into five different tasks. They are a beam your aim point to 200 feet AGL, 200 feet AGL to the round out, the round out itself, the flare, and finally, touchdown and rollout. Today, we will focus on a BMR aim point to 200 feet AGL. Let's get started. The perfect landing begins in the downwind. This is where we start to configure the airplane for the final descent to land and begin our decision making. We start by identifying our aiming point. The Archer standardization manual tells us the aiming point is a specific point on the runway. The stand man provides us with a prioritized list to select the aim point. They are the runway marking, a beam, the VASI, or the PAPI, the runway aiming point, or 1,000 foot marker, and finally, a runway stripe that is at least 200 feet beyond the threshold, and is within the first third of the runway. Assuming that you are number one for the runway, it is important that you make a sizable power change of beam your aiming point. I personally teach my students to reduce power to roughly 1,500 RPM, and make small adjustments only if necessary until turning final. This forces you to keep the nose of the airplane down and make a continuous descent to land. The next thing to think about is how to adjust the base leg depending on winds. This means that if you are expecting a high headwind component on final, turn your base early, well before 45 degrees to the aim point. I call this playing the wind game. The opposite is true if we have no headwind component on final. We will turn base further away from the runway. The Airplane Flying Handbook has a great picture explaining why we do this. To better understand this concept, think about what flaps allow us to do on landing. They allow us to fly a steeper and slower approach. When you add a headwind component, your ground speed slows down, and if no corrections are made, you will not be able to maintain the glide path. The proper way to account for this is to turn your base earlier and plan to fly a steeper final descent angle, assuming you are flying a constant airspeed and power setting. Once rolling out onto final, you can expect to make a small increase in power in order to help you maintain glide path and approach airspeed at 66 plus or minus 5. Remember, your approach speed will change depending on gust factor. The final check should be completed and verbalized no later than 200 feet AGL. From a beam your aiming point to 200 feet AGL, there are many factors that you will need to be taking into account in order to maintain a stabilized approach. Making an appropriate power change and flying the pattern based on winds is crucial to being successful. Tune in for the next video as we discuss what to do below 200 feet in preparation for the perfect landing. Thank you for watching 3 Minute Thursdays. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered, please comment below. Standardization manual. Remember, fly safe and we'll see you on the flight line.